hi guys welcome and welcome back to my channel if you're a returning subscriber welcome back and if you're new here welcome 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 please consider subscribing in today's video i'm going to be showing you how to make a pleated skirt like what i'm wearing right here so if that's something that you would like to see definitely keep watching it promises to be another fun and detailed tutorial and if you haven't seen the video for last week please check it out as it's important that you watch that before you watch this okay family so for those of you who don't know we now have a mailing list so if you would like to receive my newsletters or read from me please subscribe to the mailing list below it promises to be useful to you guys and it's exclusive content that is not available on youtube also if you would like to be a patron you can check out the link that i have in the description bar to make your pleated skirts you need the following items you need your tailor's chalk or fabric marker you need some pins you'd also need your fabric scissors you need your measuring tape you need your zipper and of course you need your fabric if you like you can also get some air stay basically just to put on the band start off by checking how much fabric you have if you don't know how much fabric you require do check out the link that i've put in the icons above it will basically just show you the calculation required to check how much fabric you need however if you do not have enough fabric don't worry about it there's a way we can go around it now if you have enough fabric you basically would have only one joining on your pleated skirt which is where it would house the zip in the case that you do not have enough fabric, which is what I'm doing, I only have a yard and a half of fabric, you will need to have a separate piece for the front and a separate piece for the back, for the back rather, meaning that you would have two joinings on your skirt. You would have a joining on the left side and a joining on the right side. To calculate the fabric required for a pleated skirt with only one seam point, you use the formula from the last video, which is the waist circumference measurement multiplied by 3 plus the total zip allowance. However, if you're working with a pleated skirt where you have a separate front and back, which is the case in this tutorial, you basically will need to calculate the fabric required for the front piece as well as the fabric required for the back piece. The formula to calculate the fabric required is you first of all need to div divide the waist circumference by two because now we are dividing the body into the front and the back piece and then you want to go ahead and enter the formula based on what is shown on the screen so essentially you're working with the same formula however in this case instead of using the whole waist circumference measurement you'll be working with half of the waist circumference measurements which makes sense because for the front piece is half of the body and then for the back piece it's half of the body Start off by folding your fabric into a manageable size and then go ahead and cut out two pieces of the desired skirt length plus two inches sewing allowance. The reason why you need two inches sewing allowance is you need one and a half inches for the hem and then half an inch to sew at the top. So basically you'll be cutting out two pieces and the only reason why you're cutting out two pieces again guys is because the fabric I'm working with in this case is not enough. I'm only working one and a half yard so I'll need to have a separate front piece and a separate back piece. So you're cutting one piece for the front and another piece for the back. Next, we'll need to calculate how much fabric we require for each piece. Again, the formula required is you need to get half of the waist measurement. So in this case, my waist circumference measurement is 32 inches. Half of that is 16 inches. So I have 16 inches for the front and 16 inches for the back. Then the sewing allowance I want to use is one inch. So again, the formula I have now in this case is the waist circumference measurement multiplied by three plus the sewing allowance of one inch for one edge and one inch for another edge. So guys, I don't want you guys to get confused. The formula is essentially the same thing. The only difference is in this case, I went ahead to do my division. So I didn't need to do waist circumference divided by two multiplied by three because I had already divided it by two. I hope that's not confusing. So guys, now that I have my value, and the value that I have with including my allowance is 50 inches. I went ahead to cut out the required fabric. Basically, we've cut out the length. Now I'm making sure that the width is what is required using the formula. So again, so I don't confuse you guys, I went ahead to add a note to the screen. So please check out the note and the example in the screen just for clarification. 
After marking out the desired fabric width, go ahead and cut off any excess fabric. Please remember that my fabric was on fold. So for instance, since I was trying to get 50 inches, I was only measuring 25 inches because the fabric was on fold already. Next, open up your fabric and mark the desired zip allowance on each edge. In this case, I'm using a zip allowance of 1 inch. So I went ahead to open up my fabric and mark 1 inch on the left edge and another 1 inch on the right edge. So if you're using a zip allowance of 1.5 inches or 2 inches, whatever it is, just go ahead and mark it on the left and the right hand side as shown. Afterwards, go ahead and mark out the desired pleat width all through the fabric so in this case i wanted each pleat to be about six inches so you want to go ahead and section the fabric into six inches wide sections divide each pleat width section into three and then label as one two and three for easy pleating Basically, what this is saying is that you have the 6 inches sections already marked out. You want to go ahead and divide each of the sections into 3. So, for instance, in the case where you're using 6 inches like me, you go and divide them into 3 so that you have 2 inches as 1, another 2 inches, and then another 2 inches. Okay? After dividing the pleat width sections into 3 and then labeling as 1, 2, and 3 appropriately, go ahead and fold over point 1 to 3 and then fold point two from another set back to one so that they are facing each other or kissing if you don't understand how to do this or if you don't understand what i'm saying do check out the last video or the video that i linked in the icon above as well as in the description bar below so that you can fully understand how to do that because i show it on paper and it's a lot clearer but then again i'm going to go over it you want to fold point one over to point three just like i'm doing right now so i have point one you want to fold it over to point three and then you want to pin that in place then you want to go ahead and take point two from another set and then fold it over so that it meets with the first one that you folded that way the pleats are kissing or facing each other go ahead and keep pleating till you get to the very end if you haven't seen the video that i made last week again i urge you to please watch it as it will help you understand what i'm doing better also you want to make sure that you hold your pleats in place with a good pin Alright guys, so one more time we're going to fold point 1 over to point 3 just like that and pin it in place and then you're going to take point 2 from another section and then fold it back so that it's missing or kissing point 1 and hold it in place and at this point guys we are done pleating. After pleating, go ahead and confirm the measurements that you have. You should have the waist circumference measurement plus zip allowance at the ends and don't forget guys in this case the waist circumference has been halved so we have 16 inches plus 2 inches a total of 18 inches and from this i can tell that we are fine go ahead and sew the pleats in place After sewing the pleats in place, this is what it looks like. And again, I'm checking my measurement just to make sure that it's correct and it's absolutely correct. So yes, job well done, guys. You guys are absolutely amazing. So we're going to move on to the second side and we're going to be doing the same thing for the second side as well. So going back to step one, we're going to check that the fabric that we have, the width is what we require. In this case, the width is more, so we're going to cut off any excess that we have. Again, I'm just reminding you guys that the reason why we're going through this process of having two separate pieces is because the fabric that I'm working with is one and a half inches. So if you have three yards, one and a half yards rather. So if you have three yards of fabric, you do not need to do this entire process. Of course, you need to pleat, but you'd only have one straight fabric. Okay, guys? If you need to do this or you want to have a joining, it's up to you. But then again, this helps you to use or manage your fabric better. 
So after cutting out the excess fabric, go ahead and mark out the zipper allowance of 1 inch at both ends. Again, remember that you can use any zipper allowance of your choice. After marking out the zipper allowance on both ends, go ahead and section or mark the pleat width all through the fabric. So you're basically going to be sectioning it into 6 inches or whatever it is that you want your pleat width to be. Like I said, my pleat width will be 6 inches. So go ahead and section your fabric into points that are 6 inches, 6 inches all through. After sectioning or marking out the desired pleat width across the fabric, go ahead and divide each pleat width section into three and label as one, two, and three for easy pleating. Go ahead and pleat by folding over point 1 to point 3 and then point 2 back to point 1 so that they're facing each other or kissing. Repeat this until you get to the end of the fabric just as shown. After pleating the entire fabric, go ahead and confirm the measurement that you have. Again, you should have the measurement of half the waist circumference and then the total zip allowance. After sewing the pleats in place, this is what they look like. The next thing to do is to go ahead and place both pieces on each other so that the right sides are facing each other. Pin the front and the back piece together at one side and then mark out the sewing allowance of 1 inch all the way from the top to the bottom and then go ahead and sew it together. After sewing, this is what it looks like. So we're going to go over to the other side which will house the zip. On the other side, go ahead and pin the pieces together, making sure the right sides are facing each other again. Starting from the top on the second side, go ahead and mark 7 inches vertically. This will be the length required for the zip. Starting from the 7 inch mark down to the hem, mark out the sewing allowance of 1 inch all the way down and then go ahead and sew it in place as shown. After sewing, the next thing to do is to hem your skirt. I like to hem my skirt by folding in half an inch and then one inch. However, guys, I just wanted to clarify that the reason why I like to do it at this point is because I have like the hem just going in a continuous circle. However, if you like, you can hem each piece separately and then just join it together, you know, by the sides. But for me, I prefer this method. After hemming the pleated skirt, the next thing to do will be to install the zipper. If you don't know how to do this, please check out the link that I have in the iCards above as well as in the description bar below. It's a detailed tutorial showing you how to install a zipper.
after sewing the zipper, this is what the skirt looks like. The next thing to do is to cut out the band. To cut out the band, you'll need to calculate the fabric required for the band. And the best way to do that is to first calculate the length of the band, which is calculated by the waist circumference measurement plus 2 inches. So in this case, the waist circumference I'm using is 32 inches plus 2 inches is 34 inches. Next, you also need to calculate the height that you want your band to be. So in this case, I want my band to be about 2 inches or about 2 one quarter of an inch, basically including the allowances actually. So you need double of that. So my band will be a total of about four and a half inches by 34 inches. After cutting out the band, if you want, you can go ahead and iron some stay onto the band. And basically what this does, it just makes the band a little bit more sturdy. After the stay has been ironed on, here's what the band looks like. The next thing to do is to fold the band into two as shown so that the right sides are touching each other. And then go ahead and sew each end on half an inch sewing allowance just as shown. After sewing the band, go ahead and turn the band over to the right side and ensure you push out all the corners with a sharp object. But please be careful guys. Go ahead and pin the band to the inside of the skirt waist. Ensure the skirt zipper point and the band start point align. So as you can see, I'm making sure it starts at the same point. And then you're going to go ahead and pin the band all the way to the skirt waist in the, on the inside or on the wrong side. After pinning the band all the way from one zip point to the other zip point, you'll notice that you have an excess of about one inch on one zip point, which is absolutely fine and normal. Go ahead and sew the band in place on half an inch sewing allowance as described. After sewing the band, here's what it looks like. Go ahead and top stitch the band close by folding the band over to the right side of the skirt as shown. After folding the band over to the right side, ensure you hold it in place with some pins just like that. And then when you're sewing, you want to make sure you sew as close to the edge as possible. After top stitching the band close, your skirt is nearly finished and the last thing to do will be to sort out the hook and eye by unstitching that in position. Alright guys, so we've come to the very end of this tutorial. I hope it was worth your while and I hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by leaving a comment suggestion or feedback in the comment section below. Let me know by sharing this video, please. It absolutely helps me out. And if you haven't subscribed, please don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you would like to join the mailing list, check out the link that I have in the description bar as well as the link for my patrons page. Thank you guys for being so awesome. I will see you on my next video next week Sunday. Thank you and stay safe.